So when someone says bad things about you, lies about you, behind your back, in front of you, when someone falsely accuses you, the first thing you need to do as a believer, the one who has declared La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, the one who has declared there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and Muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger, the first thing you need to do is to thank Allah. Wow, it might sound strange. I'm telling you when someone says something bad about you, in front of you or behind you, thank Allah, thank Allah, Alhamdulillah. Don't I sound a little bit cuckoos, a little bit crazy? The reality is no, Allah has chosen you. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Allah has chosen you. To do what? Allah is just preparing you to give you that opportunity to go through a certain sunnah that it is impossible to go through until and unless someone accuses you or says hurtful, hateful things about you, lies about you and so on. How am I going to fulfill a sunnah of bearing patience upon what people have said when no one said anything bad about me? Subhanallah. Now do you see where the Alhamdulillah comes from? Allah says, فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Amazing verse. Be patient regarding what they are saying against you. How am I going to be patient when no one said anything against me? So for that, it's impossible for you and I to lead a reasonably long life without someone somewhere down the line doing really nasty things against you. It's more about your relationship with Allah. That's what it is. You believe in Allah. Yes, I do. He created you. Yes, he did. Indeed, I'm going to return to him. Well, he is the master planner, giving you an opportunity to bear patience upon evil speech, hurtful, hateful, untruths, accusations against you. Bear patience. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ One of my favorite verses. I'm sure you've heard me say that many times if you have followed a few of my talks. Allah says, we know that what they are saying hurts you. We know it saddens you. Actually, the term used is huzn. It saddens you. Nabi Wasallam was saddened primarily because he knew those people are actually engaging in a disservice against themselves. I ask you a question. You're a good person, brother or sister. You are innocent. You are straight. You are upright. And subhanallah, here you have people saying bad things about you and you know they are telling a lie. You should say Alhamdulillah and feel sorry for them. The Prophet ﷺ was saddened because he was sorry about them and for them to say they don't know what they are doing. Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. What amazing statement. Oh Allah, guide my people. They don't know what they are doing. Imagine, Allah chose you. You're a mu'min. In the case of the Prophet ﷺ, he, was a, he is the messenger of Allah, the most loved unto Allah. What was he saying? Did he curse them and swear them and fight back like what we would do? Subhanallah. Someone says, you are stupid. You say, you, your mother, your father, and your whole family are stupid. That's what we would say. I hope not anymore. I hope it's not true. I hope what I've just said is not true. But sometimes that's how we react. We think we're a big deal. Someone says something about you, you swear him and his whole community. Subhanallah. Don't do that. Do you know your worth? Do you doubt your worth? I don't doubt my worth. My brothers and sisters, their evil must not make us lose our good. You heard what I just said? You will be judged by Allah based on your qualities, your statements, not on someone else's statements. So when they said something bad that was between them and Allah, they will be judged by what they've said. But because of your slight involvement in the sense that you're the third party on the receiving end, now Allah is watching you to say, but what are you going to do? On his side, he failed. Or on her side, she failed because of what she said. You have an opportunity to pass or fail. Here it is. We are going to show you the sunnah and we've revealed a few verses to guide you. And you know what? Let's see whether you're going to take heed or not. Take it in your stride. Don't get angry. Anger is from shaitan. Don't get angry. So what? They showed their colors. Those colors are not mine. I will still smile all the way. Subhanallah. And I know... You don't butter my bread, my beloved brother or sister. You want to speak bad about me? 
my bread and the butter comes from Allah subhanallah. My beloved brothers and sisters, look at how we should be looking at negativity. Look at negativity with a positive eye. That's the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'm not saying don't do anything about it and sit back, relax, let them trample all over you. No, that's not true. But I'm saying don't lose your great character and conduct because someone else lost theirs. You are a, you are your own man. People are watching you, and not only that. You are supposed to be a role model and an example for those younger than you. Be they your family members, children, whoever else, your community members, they're watching you. Especially as you grow a little bit older, you automatically become a senior. They will love you and have tremendous respect for you when they can see that this person is very, very wise. They are mature. They are good Muslims. They don't bother with the detractors. Today we have a sickness and an illness. What is it? People talk bad about everybody else. That's from shaitan. Now I'm talking about the person engaging in the crime. When you want to talk bad about others, you must remember the loss is yours. It's never theirs. Never theirs. You want to accuse someone, hurt them, harm them, abuse them, utter vulgar language against them. Someone swears you. What should you do first? Do you know what we do? I don't even need to say it. Come on. You know what we do. Someone swears you. Subhanallah. I see people nodding their heads. I hope you guys don't have guns in your pockets. Because someone swears you, you know, people in this country, they would actually draw their weapons. May Allah protect us. That's wrong. Someone swears you, you smile and walk away. Don't even turn towards them. Fasbir ala ma yaquluna wahjurhum jamila. Look at how Allah speaks about it. Allah says, bear patience. And you know what? Ignore them in a good way. Leave them in a nice way. Stay away from them. Don't communicate with someone whose intention is to rile you up. Every day they come to you and tell you one bad thing. They're riling you up. The one who can rile you up is controlling you. The one who can anger you has control over you. They want you to be foolish. So what do they do? They know we need this guy to get angry. When he gets angry, he's going to hit someone. When he hits someone, we'll do him in for public violence and we'll get him to sign this uh, admission of guilt to pay the fine and possibly to be in jail. So they've planned it before you even understood what has happened. And when they come, they just watch by remote control what's happening to you. You control, but you can break their entire plan. They swear you, you just smile back. They call you F's and B's. Hey, guy, everything lacquer. Subhanallah, when that happens, they will get so frustrated, so irritated because their plan has failed. That's what the Quran is telling you. Don't let people's plans pass. You must understand there are people out there who will be hating you, disliking you for something. When you see others succeed in anything, do you get jealous? Do you get envious? Would you like to see their downfall? If that's the case, you need help. You need to connect with Allah. You need to actually build your relationship with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who gave them. He will give you. Work hard. Pray for them. Thank Allah for them. Don't become jealous because you know what? That jealousy leads to enmity. Enmity leads to hatred. And hatred can lead to war. Subhanallah. You hate someone. What will happen? You begin to hurt them, harm them. Fighting. Then it becomes physical. And sometimes it goes beyond that. People literally go to war. When you treat someone badly, it's a debt against your name. It's coming back for you. First thing you do, Alhamdulillah. Then you pray for them. Oh Allah, guide these people. Oh Allah, soften their hearts. That's not easy. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ was praying for Abu Jahl. He was an enemy. And he was praying for Umar ibn Khattab. He says, Oh Allah, soften the hearts of at least one of these two. And bring them to Islam so that at least the strength that they have, they can use it towards the deen. How many of us would ever pray those type of prayers for our enemies?